is going on and welcome back. So today we have a little, not really a surprise guest to the channel because some of you have seen this car before, but we have a revisit, I'll call it that I guess. Uh, we've got a revisit of a car that we've had here before. We've got a few things to check out and uh, see what's going on with it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Cue the intro. So this car is no surprise to some of you on the channel here. You have seen this car before. We did a little belt change and uh, fixed the cruise control on it. But the car is back. And for those that are new, this is a 2010 GT500. Belongs to some friends of mine. And uh, we got a few things to check out on the car that are a little more serious than a belt change and cruise control fix. So. Man, let's pop the hood and let me explain what's going on. All right, y'all, so most of you know GT500 is supercharged and this one is no different than the rest. And like I said, this is a 2010 model. So let's get into the symptoms. So the symptom is that the car feels to be low on boost, meaning it's not reaching the boost pressure that it used to. So, according to the owner, the boost used to read, I believe, around 10 PSI on the gauge. Now, this is a gauge reading. This, this may not be, you know, actual boost. If you had a mechanical gauge hooked up, I believe that even on these cars, the boost is kind of an inferred reading. Um, I could be wrong. If I am wrong, feel free to comment down below and let me know but I believe it is inferred just kind of like the S550 is like mine over there I've got a boost gauge but it's not an actual mechanical boost gauge it is inferred and the computer takes data and figures out what boost level is at but anyway so normally around 10 I believe on the gauge is what they say they usually read well now it's down to maybe around 5 so something's going on you know, regardless of what the boost reads, it's not reading what it used to. So something is going on, I believe, with the supercharger or something in relation to that. You know, obviously the supercharger is what creates boost. So I got a few things I want to check on it. I'm going to start uh, getting into the car here and seeing what I can find out. And I will take you guys along for the ride and show you what I'm doing and you know my conclusions after I do that so let's get into it the first thing I'm going to do is remove the supercharger belt or at least remove it from the front pulley there and uh, I got a few things I want to check so here we go let's get into it all right y'all so I wanted to show the first thing that I am checking here what I've got set up is we've got vacuum we got a little vacuum pump here set up on the bypass valve so let me see if I can get you back in here. You can see the clear tube. You can see where that connects. A little black cap right there. That is the bypass valve. Here's the original vacuum line that goes normally goes on it right there. I am basically pulling vacuum on the bypass valve to make sure that it holds vacuum and I set it at about 20 inches and it has been holding that for the past several minutes so that will tell me that the diaphragm in that bypass valve is good if it holds vacuum then it should be good and I also while I was pulling vacuum pumping pumping the hand pump while I was doing that I watched the actuator and I can see the actuator moving so the next thing that I will check is to see and make sure 
that the actuator arm is actually attached where it needs to be attached. Now one thing I may need to do is I may need to take off this intake tube to be able to look down into the supercharger possibly and see it. So I don't know. Um, I'm going to see what I find out here with the vacuum um, and checking that actuator arm and then go from there. Yeah, so so far this is checking out good, which is which is good, um, good information to know. And hopefully, will lead me into the right direction. I hope so. Anyway, we're gonna get going to it and uh, see where we end up next. All right, y'all. So we checked the bypass valve vacuum. That was good, and I also checked these lines. Now this is the EGR valve here. Uh, checked the lines. I pulled the lines off here from the intake. Uh, put the hose for the vacuum pump there and there's a little nipple under this cap back here pull the cap off and uh, Put a vacuum cap over that nipple uh, The EGR appears to be working correctly. It did pull vacuum. It pulled well over 20 inches and uh, It slowly bled off but from what I understand that is working correctly um, so uh, I guess it needs some kind of back pressure from the exhaust to actually hold the vacuum or so that's what I've seen online um, but from what it's doing it seems to be working okay uh, so I don't see a problem there I did check the lines themselves I took these off plugged them with my fingers had the vacuum pump here uh, the other line runs over to the bypass valve and that held vacuum perfectly so the lines are good the EGR seems to be working correctly from what I can tell and the bypass valve seems to be working correctly as well so now what we're going to do we're going to pull that blower belt off we're going to spin this over by hand and uh, see if we notice anything weird any weird noises anything like that maybe some shaft play i don't know but we're going to check it out and see what we can find out all right y'all so as you can see we have the supercharger belt disconnected from the supercharger pulley now the best way to do this is to move the coolant tank over it's just these two bolts right here pick it up move it over set it out of the way and then you can get your uh, ratchet or whatever you use into the tensioner it takes a 3 8 drive so i have a half inch ratchet with a half inch of 3 8 adapter and it works perfectly so anyway let's get to the point here so i can turn this pulley by hand and I'm not feeling anything weird. It's not making any weird noises. There's really no shaft play. There's a little bit in and out. As you can hear, let's see if you can hear that. To me, that's normal because any rotating shaft, you have to have some end play. It's got to have some kind of play. You will feel that play when it is cold. When everything heats up and expands, that play is taken away but everything still runs smoothly and efficiently you have to have some end play in a shaft in a rotating shaft so you have to so if i pull on this and i'm pulling pretty good you can hear it just a little bit so that to me is normal like i said there is no weird noises turning this and i got the fan on and, and you know that's making noise but um, I turned the fan off and spun this and couldn't hear anything either direction. It's really smooth So I don't think there's any issue with the blower itself um, So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna continue to look here um, and see what we can find out so far Finding nothing everything seems to be working correctly, but we're gonna keep going if I find anything else then I will definitely uh, definitely let you guys know so let's keep at it all right y'all so as you see i've got everything buttoned back up the belt is back on the blower got the coolant tank back in place um i haven't found anything that's stood out to me vacuum wise everything still there seems to be good um the lines everything seem to be good i did check this line here this goes to the other side of that bypass um, I put vacuum right here at this point, disconnected it from the air intake and put vacuum there and it holds vacuum just fine. So I don't see a problem there. I'm going to crank it up and see if I notice anything out of the ordinary when it's idling and then I believe I'm going to take it for a drive and see if I can experience 
what she is experiencing so I don't know we'll see what happens we're gonna drive it um, I'm not sure if I'll film while I'm driving probably won't be anything too exciting so I don't know I'm gonna drive it and then come back and uh, see what see if there's anything I figure out so anyway let's keep at it we gotta find us Alright y'all, so I drove the car down the road, um, the boost gauge was reading about 5 or 6 pounds, uh, now she said that the boost gauge normally reads around 10 or so I believe, I think I stated that before, so yeah, I don't know what the car felt like before so it's hard for me to judge, um, it does feel like it has a little bit of pep to it, but you know, it's hard for me to judge without knowing. So. When I came back, just to try to cover everything that I could that was simple, um, I did take the intake tube off, I did take this off, took the air box out, um, I checked the mass air sensor, which is right there, I checked that, checked within the tube, make sure nothing was like in there or anything like that, so nothing I could find, the only thing that I could really find was, you know, I think the filter could be cleaned. I checked, you know, that port there to make sure it wasn't blocked or anything like that. It's just a very small vacuum port. It wasn't blocked. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary at all. So, like I said, I cleaned the airbox up and put it all back together. And I did crank it up again and run it. And I wanted to see, I didn't have anybody else here to give me a hand, but I wanted to see if that bypass valve was doing its job so I have a small snake camera I don't know what you call it uh, I don't remember what you call it but it's a, a little camera very small you can it's got a long 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 wire to it so you can check in places I mean you can get down a spark plug hole stuff like that so I use that camera and put it back here attached it to this guy right here and uh, took some video of some, you know, wide open throttle revs. And uh, the boost gauge did read boost, probably about three PSI. So I did that and the bypass valve looks like it's actuating correctly. I'll go ahead and throw that footage in here for you guys to see. There is no audio on that footage, but you will be able to see the bypass valve in action, which was really cool. I'm glad I was able to check that to make sure that it is in fact actually working. So I'll throw that footage in here and then I'll be back. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that footage. I thought it was pretty cool, man, to be able to see that, you know, be able to, um, you know, do that on your own. Typically, you need somebody else in the car to rev it while you're out here watching, but that camera worked out perfectly for this. I forgot I had it, and then I was like, man, I need to use that, and that would work great. So, but anyway, we haven't found anything. We haven't found any issues with the car. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure, uh, where to go from here so I'm gonna do some research um, unfortunately we don't have a fix in this video <laughs> I was I was really hoping that you know I'd be able to find a smoking gun and get it fixed and get this car you know making the power it's supposed to make and all that good stuff but unfortunately I guess it's not gonna happen so anyway uh, I'm going to talk to the owners and see what they say and uh, make a plan from there and do some research like I said and see what I can find out. If any of you guys that are watching this have any ideas that I can check, please let me know. 
uh, I'm pretty sure I covered the basics but there may be something that I am unaware of with these cars I don't know so if you know something man, let me know and then uh, maybe we can get this thing fixed and back on the road and, and maybe hauling butt so anyway hope you like this video if you did hit the like button if you haven't subscribed please do so we'll see you on the next one